Alright guys, welcome back. My name is Battle Cattle, and today we are going to be doing a quick match with the Butcher. I'm going to talk about how to play, kind of how to position yourself, talents you can choose, different build types, and all that kind of stuff. So, for anybody aspiring to play Butcher, um, this is going to be a guide for you. So, we will see how this match goes. I'm playing with my brother here, Darth Geek. He is going to play as Zagara this time. All right, guys, we got matched up. Sky Temple. This one is a fun one for Butcher. So my team is Butcher, Zagara, Zeratul, Kel'Thas, and Johanna. And for them, they have Li Ming, Artanis, ETC, Falstad, and the Lost Vikings. So I have an opinion about the Lost Vikings, and it's not a good one. Um, I've only ever seen one player that I can remember that has ever been good with the Lost Vikings. Um, most of them just feed the uh, enemy team, whichever team they're on, they feed the opposite team just free EXP. Even though each one of them is worth less, they die so much that they just feed the enemy team. So if this guy knows what he's doing, he's going to split. He's going to try to take one Viking in each lane, and if he can micromanage enough, he's going to try to push in all three lanes and just soak EXP. If he doesn't know what he's doing, he's going to group them all together or just leave some of them in a lane and ignore them because then they're a really easy kill for Butcher. What I do, uh, I like to call myself the Melee Nova because... I basically hide in the grass, wait for an opportunity, and run in there and steal a killing blow. Um, so basically what Nova does. Except I don't have stealth. And this is during the Lunar Festival, so I'm going to help them get this monkey right here. Uh, what, what I do for it is I hold down spacebar because it zooms in on my character, and then I just hold down my right mouse button and follow this guy around. Makes it a lot easier than clicking and having to move your camera around and all that kind of stuff. And I do play with my camera unlocked. I find it a lot easier to look around the map and stuff if I leave my camera unlocked. It's just a personal preference. L is the button to do that, by the way, if you don't know. Uh, L will lock your camera or unlock your camera. So the first talent. Um, because the enemy team is going to try to get away. Falstad, Lost Vikings, and Li Ming are going to try to escape from me. I'm going to go with Invigoration. Reduces my hamstring cooldown and uh, mana cost. So I can hamstring over and over and over. It's really nice. Uh, block. I don't really want to go with block. I'm not going in there. I'm going to die. So, <laughs> sorry Zeratul. I'm not going to help you out. Um, yeah, so block. Um, I'm not a tank. And I don't think this team has enough damage to really constitute having to block. So I'm not going to get that talent. I'm not going to waste that spot. Chop Meat increases hamstring damage to non-heroes. So like if I'm doing a minion clear, when I do a hamstring, which is this attack right here, then it will increase uh, the damage done to them and increase the amount of meat that drops from them. And... That's kind of useless. Um, I get meat just fine without it, so there's no sense in wasting that talent spot by just me being lazy and wanting to get more meat faster. Um, let's get him, get him, get him. Ah, whatever. And then the very last one is collecting fresh meat heals you. This can actually be really helpful situationally. And I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. So situationally, if I'm in the middle of a fight, like right there, and there are minions around me, of course I'm going to kill them during the fight by accident. I might not be aiming for them, but they're going to die. So they're going to drop meat, and it'll heal me. Uh, it could be beneficial to helping you complete a team fight without dying, but that's not the one I normally go with. I prefer the hamstring. Who am I going to get? I'm going to go behind. No, they're going to see me if I go behind. I want to get Li Ming. So, bye-bye, Li Ming. She's probably going to teleport away. Yep. But I got her out of the circle. So she's no longer in the team fight, and my team left. So it wasn't actually a team fight anyways. Fine. I will just hearth and get more health because my team decided to leave. Or Zeratul. I don't think... He... Yeah, he's... Oh, okay, he got out of that. I was not expecting him to get out of that. I'm going to come up and help them, um, just see if I can pick somebody off, or not. Ha! Huh. Okay. Well, bye-bye. I'm not going up there. 
Find something else. Yeah, this one. Uh, increases hamstring length. Mm, it's not really that useful. Um, because you can charge in and then hamstring immediately, so you don't really need extra length on your ch on your uh, hamstring. So I don't waste a talent spot on picking that one. Uh, the one I always go with is Unrelenting Pursuit because it 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 reduces the cooldown of my charge if I actually hit somebody with it. So if it fails halfway through or I get stunned or something like that, then it will still be the full 20 second cooldown. But if I take this talent, then it will reduce the cooldown by quite a bit. So I can charge the same person multiple times in a team fight, which is really helpful. The other options, hamstring does bonus damage to movement impaired targets. Mm. Again, kind of situational. Got him, it was totally worth it. Um, I just don't really go for that because honestly if you hamstring somebody they're already trying to get away and they typically slow me somehow and I don't actually get to kill them. So I just don't really go for it. I know that there are uses for it so you could pick it if you feel like their team doesn't have very many slows and you'd be able to get in there and get it. But uh, I typically don't. And Venom is also actually a really good one because you can run in there, do your Q and W immediately on the target and then put a dot on them. So those can all be really helpful. I just typically go with this one because I like charging people. It um, can turn the tides of a team fight pretty quick if I stun them. Ah! Well, I'm probably gonna die. Probably gonna die. No? Yeah, they made the mistake of actually focusing Johanna. Um, it's typically not what you want to do with Johanna. I kind of have a general rule with dealing with her, and that is ignore her. Because she's meant to absorb damage, she doesn't really do that much damage, so I just don't waste my attacks on her. Um, I do want to target a squishy first. Falstad would be a great target if I can get him. No, I wasn't able to get him. And I don't want to stay around those towers too long because they will do a lot of damage to me. Got him. Ah! Yeah, I tried doing my Butcher's Brand, but every time I tried, uh, I got stunned. So, this attack will heal me. Um, I can actually face tank several people with that attack for a limited amount of time. But, if they stun me, then it doesn't do any good. So, the, this level talent. I always go with this one. It increases your fresh meat and less less of it is lost on death only half of it is lost when you die so right now I died I have 13 stacks instead of having to start all the way at zero so what this does is it increases my damage by 1% attack damage per stack so if I have 35 stacks which is what it's at now uh, the, the cap is at 35 stacks if I have 35 stacks I'm doing 35% more damage to the enemy which is really helpful if you charge in and you only have like three seconds to actually damage the enemy before they run away. Then it's super helpful to have that extra 35% attack damage. I should have charged Li Ming. I don't know why I charged him. But I guess it was helpful in helping Kel'Thas run away. But yeah, I'm not going to get him. Uh, he's just, he has that shield. Unless he wants to come back and play. But I don't know. He might want to come back and play. Whatever. And then this bottom one, it could be helpful for running from a longer distance, but all that really does, in my opinion, is allow the enemy to run away longer. Because uh, normally when people see that little skull above their head and they, they know that they're getting charged, then they start to run away. And they have a little bit of time to run away before you kill them. Oh no. Ha! Had to get him first. Now I gotta run away. Run! Alright, now this one, both talents are really good. Uh, Lamb to the Slaughter and Furnace Blast. Both are really amazing talents. I typically go with Furnace Blast because I like that extra damage in a team fight. Uh, the enemy loves to cluster together, and I love to break up their cluster with Furnace Blast. So I'm just going to go with that one. Um, I'm going to talk about Lamb to the Slaughter a little bit too. Let's see if I can get these guys.
Got him, at least. Alright, um... So Land of the Slaughter, what it does, uh, it chains somebody. I, you've probably, if you've been in a match against Butcher, you've probably gotten chained and it just takes you off. Because it's so annoying. Um, well, Land of the Slaughter is really helpful for keeping somebody there if they love to teleport away. And I'm probably going to die. I'm trying to face tank them. And it's not going too well. Ah. Okay, um, Furnace Blast, basically what it does is after three seconds, fire explodes around you and does 702 damage to all enemies. So if they're standing in your little glowing circle, after three seconds that glowing circle will explode and do a massive amount of damage to everybody in it. So what I normally do is I charge and immediately activate it so that its cooldown is going, that three seconds is counting down while you're charging somebody. Then as soon as I hit them, I do Hamstring and immediately W, my um, Butcher's Brand, because... I want to do as much damage on him as possible, and so by the time I've done all of that, my R explodes and will normally kill them, or do enough damage where my auto attacks will kill them. <clears throat> this game is not going very well, we're not soaking EXP um, very well, so I'm going to go up here, soak some EXP here, I know they're right below me, at least some of the Vikings are right below me, <clears throat> so they're probably going to try to come up and get me, so I have to keep an escape route open. Now, back onto the Lamb, with, the lamb of the Slaughter. Um, if you want to go with that talent, it's, it's helpful for like, you saw how I tr kept trying to kill Artanis and he would just be able to get away. I would run in there, do Lamb to the Slaughter, and get him, and hook him there for however many seconds it is, uh, four seconds. And that would be a, enough time where I can continue to auto attack him. So if I have 35 stacks of meat, my auto attacks hit like a freight train. So if he's there and he's my captive audience for four seconds I can do a lot of damage to him I'm gonna run in here and see if I can knock down this tower because we need this EXP big time <clears throat> get all these things all right now I have to hearth and go help them out because they are pushing really hard and they're just gonna keep pushing because they're not really seeing much opposition. <clears throat> and again, I am squishy because I am a melee assassin. So I'm not going to run right into the middle of them. But what I typically do is wait for one of them to run next to me. Ah, he got away. Dang, that's annoying. I try to find somebody who runs out of the group, and I charge them and do as much damage to them as possible. I kind of uh, botched that one. So, Savage Charge is typically the one I go with. Burning Rage can be helpful as well. Uh, just damages all the ne nearby enemies. But it only does 38 damage to each person, so it's really not that beneficial to enemy heroes. Really, it would just be good for minion clears. I'm just going to go ahead and pick Savage Charge, and then I'm going to keep talking about him as I'm playing. So, uh, Savage Charge, Ruthless Onslaught deals extra damage. When I hit them, when I make contact with them after charging them, it does extra damage to them. So, like this guy. Now, oh, come on. Yeah, his shields. Oh, get him. Get him. Yes, nice. Nice job. All right. So it'll do a little extra damage to him. Uh, Leeming, that was a bad decision. Shouldn't have charged in there on that. <clears throat> but I'm going to knock down this anyways. Okay. Now let's get out of here. Uh, yeah. Zeratul, you need to get out before you just feed the enemy team. I don't know why I'm hearthing. I'm going to go up top. Alright, so Crave Flesh, Butcher's Brand grants movement speed. So you could brand somebody to try to uh, heal yourself if you're in a bad situation, and then you can just jet out of there and just run. I'm not going to go up top by myself because they're probably going to destroy me. So I'm going to stay back here. Yeah, they're chasing me down. Bam! Big damage. Alright, um... And then Spell Shield reduces incoming ability damage. That would have actually been really helpful right there. I still prefer this one, but for teams that are hitting you really hard, 
the increased ability damage is or decreased ability damage is really good now with this one um this one is pretty much a no contest talent um blood frenzy fresh meat grants attack speed so you get 35 percent extra attack speed and attack damage on your meat stacks if you're at full tax so it's just one percent per stack of meat um so currently i'm at 18 percent uh, hamstring slow no longer fades and lasts longer so it's the full slow duration the entire time it's on them it's good for people who love to run away um, but again I prefer the extra damage because end game I can be doing like six to seven hundred damage per second on um, the enemy team so like I'll be hitting them for a lot of damage per second and this one gain attack speed and reduce disables at low health it's good for getting out and also your attack speed it, it increases it just like blood frenzy but i prefer the blood frenzy attack speed bonus all right so you can see right here i'm doing 425 per hit and as i pick up more stacks of meat it goes up 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 434 per hit and that's it's hitting about once a second all right, let's go down and help them down here. Because they're about to get jumped. I can just tell they're about to get jumped. I want to get rid of Artanis. So... Oh, that was... That was really bad on his part. Yeah. He kind of interrupted my entire rotation for that. That was unnecessary. Now they're all going to body block me. And we missed our opportunity to get good kills on that. We could have killed at least three of them there, and we all missed our opportunities. Now, it looks like Zeratul is going to go in there and die. Get ETC. There we go. I just got him because he was easiest to get at that moment. I typically don't advise going for the tanks because that is literally their job to absorb damage. Uh, so you're just going to waste your damage by attacking a tank. Um, but in that situation, he was squishy, and he was easier to kill, so I wanted to get him. Now I'm going to run over here and get all this EXP, because this EXP is very valuable to me. Since they're attacking our forts, and we can't really get that back because too many of our people have died. I have to get as much EXP as I can. So I'm going to go and EXP farm. If they're going mid and looks like maybe bottom as well, I'm going to go top because I want to be as far away from them as possible but also get all this good EXP right here. So wait for my minions to go in because I don't want to absorb all the damage. And I'm going to charge this guy and just take him out. I do want to kill the mercs first. Obviously, they do a lot more damage than the minions do. Uh, the minions just kind of tickle, but the mercs actually do a lot of damage. So I want to take them out first. Now, a tip with your Q, your hamstring. You can do a lot of damage with that if you time it right and if you position yourself right if you position where they're all in a line in front of you you can damage all of them at once now Li Ming um, uh, yeah that's uh, she got away from that one there's another tactic that I do sometimes that's activate R beforehand and then charge in but as you saw the problem with doing that is that um, sometimes they will get out of your range and your R will go off, and you'll just waste it. And nobody can um, benefit from that. Yeah, I gotta get out of there. Get ETC. Well, I was going to get him, but now they got me. Alright. We are catching up in levels, but... I think we just lost the game there. There are two temples available for them to get. Vikings are going up to the top, and they are pushing core. It's almost a guaranteed loss for us. Uh, all five of us are dead. So. I 
That's a game over for us. Now this last one I will use uh, a little bit of time to explain. There are really only two that I would go with here, Furn uh, Fires of Hell or the, um, the blade attack that I did. Because the one I did, it, it makes your auto attacks slow them. So you don't have to rely on hamstring to slow them and also your auto attacks do a lot more damage. So that one's good. Your Furnace Blast talent, if you spec into that one, it'll make Furnace Blast go off twice. I don't typically do that one because people run out of my Furnace Blast anyways. So that second one is normally wasted. All right, so this one got 320 gold. I completed a quest. Cool. Uh, 118,000 experience. It's not very good. Um... Again, our team made a lot of mistakes, a lot of positional errors. Our Kel'Thas, he admitted in the game that he's bad, and I would agree with that statement. Um, nine deaths and only two kills. He did have good siege damage, but a lot of that was from just killing minions and running away. So that's not very beneficial to our team. Uh, Johanna, she tried, but the problem is she didn't have a healer. Um, when you run into that much damage on the other team and when they have that much of a level advantage over you, um, even somebody like Johanna needs a healer if she wants to just run into the thick of the battle. So she died seven times, only tanked 42,000 damage. Um, Artanis tanked more than that. And uh, so you can see they just overall outskilled, outclassed us. And uh, that ETC, he was very good at positioning himself and hunting people down. I did end up getting top EXP, which is not a surprise as Butcher because I can go lane clear really quick and then gank people. Uh, I did get eight assists. Four deaths is higher than I wish that I had. I like to stay around the one or two range. Obviously zero is optimal, uh, but one or two is normally what I try to stay at. So only one kill. That wasn't a very good game, but I did get to uh, talk about how to play Butcher. And I hope that anybody who's aspiring to play him will have a better grasp on what he can do and how to play him. So thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please um, subscribe and leave a comment down below and tell me how I did. And be sure to hit that like button if you liked it and dislike it if you didn't. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again later.